on time. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. We are here and excited to be able to bring to you this conversation about sleep and its effect on mental health. Today we have Dr. Codrington Banda, and he is here to let you know he loves the Lord. He is a missionary that is working with people to help them with their ailments. What he does is he comes out and he talks to us about the things that are going on in our bodies. And so uh, one of the things that I wanna make sure is that this is not to be a lecture. He has expressed that he wants us to be able to communicate with each other so that we can get a deep dive conversation and knowing exactly what is happening with us. And so without further ado, I'm just gonna thank you, Brother uh, Banda, for coming out here and sharing your wealth of knowledge. Um, and he is part of the, um, the, the Cam, Camden, yes, how did I forget that? Camden SDA Church. So we want to thank him for coming out here and thank you all for coming to our ministry this evening. So thank you very much and without further ado, Dr. Banda. Thank you so much. Um, we were just backstage now. Now we come to the full stage, okay. Uh, let me say that if you have any question, the presentation that I have is just, I would say is just a smoke screen because I can put a presentation but you know how you feel and you know um, what is bothering you. Although the presentation is focusing on sleep, you'll find that most of our illnesses are mediated by lack of sleep. And I wanted just to give you the biology of sleep. Because most of us, maybe we don't really understand why, how, and when. I wanna just begin from there, but I'm gonna finish the last question that we were talking about. Is this food we are buying in the store really giving you the nutrients you get? She made a point that most of these foods we see in our grocery stores, they are flying in from overseas overnight. Where they are growing these crops, is the food really nutritious? Then I was trying to answer that question when we are officially opening up. And I think we will be remiss if we don't start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with empty hands. These are your people. Talk to them about their health. Just use me as a conduit to do that. Whenever we live here, Lord, our desire is to be saved in your kingdom. Bless us and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was talking to Andrea that the goal of medical missionary is not to get become health sinners, but to be health spiritual people that are waiting for the coming of Christ. And once that has happened, you will notice that they are not gonna sit at home, they're gonna go out and begin to talk to people what God has done for them. I don't think that sickness is a mystery, it's sin. And Sister White makes it very clear that if we violate the laws of health, there's no way we can keep the law of God, let alone. I've always, you see, I'm a therapist for children. I've worked my life with young children from two all the way mainly about 15 and 16. I don't take a lot of adults. Adults, I just advise what they need to do. But when it comes to therapy, I deal with young people. Every time I ask young people, do you think your behaviors, I mean, do you think the food you eat affect your behaviors? The answer is what? No. No. 
I asked my graduate students, those who are going into community centers to be mental health practitioners, I said, do you think that food affect behavior? The answer is always no. We have distanced our food from how we feel. If we bring food to the way we feel after eating, we will make changes immediately. Sometimes we don't pay attention to these kind of things. For example, you are eating a sandwich. All you are paying attention is the excitement that is caused by that food, by raising your dopamine. You don't know what it is actually doing into your system. So, like when I was talking uh, to Andrea, Andrea wanted me to do about sleep, and that's what I was, I'm going to do. But if you don't have sleeping problems, raise any question, definitely I'll answer to the best of my knowledge, okay? All right. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 24, it says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. God called the light day and darkness night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. There is a purpose for having daylight and night light. That is weaved into our DNA, into our cells. Our eyes is part of the brain that is outside this car. What you do during the day is going to affect what happens where? At night. So if you're twisting and turns, I don't want you to think that is an isolated incident. Backtrack your steps and look how have you treated your day. In actual fact, if you give correct need of day and correct need of night, the sicknesses we are suffering from will begin to dissipate. I'll say again, light is very important. Night is also very important. In actual fact, when we open our eyes in the morning, we are met with a daylight. There are a set of cells in our eyes that begin to program, saying, okay, within 12 hours from now, you, pin your grand, get ready because you're going to sustain melatonin. I'm going to talk about melatonin. But there's another hormone, adenosine that begins to slowly what? Rise. That keeps us awake. Nobody goes to bed every two hours during the day. That wakefulness is controlled by this. The higher the adenosine, the wider wake will be. This is programmed within 11 to 12 hours. Adenosine will be what? Rising. Rising. Once it reaches the peak, as the sun is dropping, it begins to what? Drop. Drop. I'm not talking about cortisol. But adenosine, you know, adenosine triphosphate is produced in the mitochondria as energy, okay? But when that is synthesized, you have adenosine without triphosphate, without phosphate. That is the one that keeps us awake. Then as the sun goes down, then a message is sent to the pineal gland. The misconception is this. Melatonin keeps us what? Asleep. That's not the truth. Melatonin just bumps us up. Set the clock on then the rest goes on. The suppression of adenosine 
is the one that really removes the wakefulness and the darkness keeps us what? Asleep. Now, here's another good thing, staying asleep. Okay? Not just superficial sleep, but going into REM sleep, what we call restorative sleep. That's what we need to be going there. You need to have at least three to four spindles of deep sleep throughout the night that last about 90 minutes. That's why they calculated the time, eight hours is good enough for night sleep. And a lot of us, we are not sleeping that much. Some of us, we have to go to the bathroom three, four times. Now, let me say this. If you go, if you go to the bathroom at night, more than two times, check sleep apnea. I say it again. If you get up, let's say you go to, the, you go to bed at 8.30, you fall asleep. At 11 o'clock, you get up, you go to the bathroom. You come back, you wait for 10, 15 minutes, you go back to sleep. Then at 1.30, you go where? Back to the bathroom. To the bathroom. Then at 3.30, you got to go again what? To the bathroom. Don't waste your time taking sleeping medicine. You got a medical condition. One, you might be sleeping with your mouth open. Ask your husband, do I snore? If you snore, that's the reason why you are going to the bathroom. And I'm seeing this with my kids, like five years old, six years old. When you give them a CPAC machine, they don't pee on the bed anymore. It's a medical condition. Because when you sleep with your mouth open, what is happening is air passage is being closed. You're not getting more oxygen to the brain. And the brain produces a chemical that really shrinks your bladder. So every drop of liquid that goes there is sending you to where? People have been checked diabetes. Oh, you got diabetes. Yes, you can be, it can be like that. But they say, no, your sugar is good. So all of us, we don't have insurance. I don't have insurance myself. I work, but I call insurance as calm. Because he dictates what you're going to do. If you get your own money, you can tell them what you want to do. <laughs> so the cheapest way you can around a CPAC machine is buy a mouth tape. Tape your mouth. It will force you to breathe through the nose. Within three days, you're going to sleep all night without going to the bathroom. Wow. Yeah. Mouth. Mm -hmm. Is mouth that an tape. actual yeah. tape for you got the mouth? Here. Google it on Amazon. Mouth tape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just open it up. It, it, it's a cross like this. You put it up here. It will tape this side to this side this side to this side that's all do it hmm. after you finish talking to your husband because once you fall asleep you're not going to talk to him anymore to, or you, you guys <laughs> you're not going to talk to her anymore <laughs> the just go ahead and do you your that business it, that <laughs> some of our husbands might just tell us that we're snoring just to close our mouth <laughs> <laughs> Now, the way I assess this in my children, for example, if a children is really threatening suicide, eh, that's the cause. I assess this. Do you get up in the morning and rushing to the kitchen to get some water so that you can wet your mouth? It's so dry. He said, yeah, yeah, I drink. It's so dry to my throat. Then I say, okay. I tell the parent. I mean, going through Sleep, sleep studies to get a CPAC machine. It's, it's an ordeal on its own. Go ahead. Hmm? Like snoring, sometimes the cause is apnea, sleep apnea. So. No, snoring is not the cause. Snoring is, it's just a symptom. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 
Yeah. I, I'm just thinking about like sleep apnea and snoring because a lot of people that snore have sleep apnea also. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering with yeah. the two. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Now, the biggest, eh, the biggest thing that I want you to take from this conversation eh, is that I don't know whether it is the chicken or the egg that started. Okay, I don't know. But I have seen that the kids, this started surrounding my kids that I was really getting. They have anxiety, they have depression, they have ADHD, they have ODD. Now, when you begin to look at the medication the doctor is prescribing, I started trying to get things that can help them, teaching their parents how they can really do. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm anti-medicine, no. They have their own place medicines. And I want you to understand me, I'm not saying they don't take medicine. That's not my premise at all. But some of the medicine we are taking do not solve the problem. Mm -hmm. It's just reaching somebody's pocket. So if you can take this in your own hands and begin to experiment, you have nothing to lose. For example, if you look at the price of the mouth tape, 200 of them, it's literally not even a fraction of a CPAC machine. So to come to your question is to say that, yeah, in those instances, what I've found out, because I've gone both ways, I recommended my child be tested for sebamia. He went to his primary care physician because he knows me. He said, okay, I'll refer to a sleep study. They did a sleep study. After they do the sleep study, it took almost to my six months for everything to work through the insurance and do so that Medicaid can pay for it. True enough. They gave him this thing that you put on your face. I was in the home, I saw it. I mean, that boy would pull it out. He wouldn't really use it. Then they had to go back and get the one that you put in your nostrils. Then you sleep with that. That one worked. But once that started working, definitely, the behaviors went down. That's how I began to know. Then, there's a lot of literature, once you begin to come there, a lot of studies that have done about this issue that I never knew that it is available there. But because I was in there, I, be, I, I, I saw them. So I'm recommending to you that there's a better way. Just tap your mouth and check the results. A week before last, I was in the home working with my kid He's 11 years old. And the parent was saying that he sleeps like a, you know, a fetus, like a wheel. If you go in his bed, what if, he took me, showed me a picture. It's just, the whole bed is empty. He's just on the corner like that. They give him diapers because they were tired of washing beddings every day. Those are sleep problems. Is that right? But do you see that just tapping the mouth straightened out within three days, stretched out? He was going every other day without being in bed to almost a week. Last week he called me and said, you know, can you believe this? This boy did not, and he's sleeping on his bed. Eight medications to contain his behaviors. So that's one of the things that I would say. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 24, it says, the influence of pure air, not Genesis, but in uh, councils on diets and food, page 104, paragraph number one, it reads, the influence of pure, fresh air 
is to cause the blood to circulate helpful, helpfully through the system. It refreshes the body and it tends to render it strong and health while the same, at the same time its influence is decidedly felt upon the mind. That's what we're talking about. The mind, food, definitely it affects. Impair, uh, imparting a degree of composure and serenity, it excites the appetite and renders the digestion of food more perfect and induces sound and sweet sleep. As we go along, I will show you that eating just close to bed can cause you to have a sleepless night. Now, the reason why we distance our food from our behaviors and how we feel is because we have not learned to see the impact of food on our behaviors. For example, I was talking to one of my friends and he said his daughter is going through depression. He needs, he, she has chemical imbalance. So my response was, where did you get this information from? He said, yeah. Do you know that if we are thinking that we have a chemical imbalance, then we're going to espouse the idea that if I get this chemical, it will, imbal it will give me what? Balance. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But no. Whether you have anxiety, depression, attention deficit, you have cancer, you have fibromyalgia, you have heart disease. The root cause of all those is inflammation. Let's take depression. If you have inflammation in the synaptic cleft, you are not going to make enough serotonin to keep you the feel that you want to feel. So, this idea that I'm going to take a chemical, it's going to straighten out thing. You're going to take that chemical forever. The last thing that is going to do is to send you six feet underground. Yeah. Now, let me explain a little bit. Depression might come from your stomach. Because here's, when you eat food, it goes where? Stomach. Into, stomach. Into stomach. How is serotonin made? You know, it's very interesting. I ask my graduate students, I say, tell me, how is serotonin come about? They didn't tell me that. Serotonin is synthesized when you have amino acid, vitamin D, and a B vitamin, which is B6, with vitamin D. In real time, in the synaptic cleft, those are synthesized to make serotonin. And this idea, these neurotransmitters, especially serotonin, is really, really very important because while we are asleep, the brain sends them to different organs to keep them functioning the way God created them to what? Function. To function. Now, if you are you have chronic pain, which is a sign of what? Inflammation. Obviously, you're not going to have a good sleep at night. You'll be twisting and turning. I always tell my, my patients when they tell me I'm in chronic pain, I say, no, you shouldn't be in chronic pain. You're eating wrong food. Get good food to remove what? Pain. You'll be saying, come on now, Brother Banda. That's fair tale. Pain is everywhere. I'm not saying undermining how you feel, but there's a way of getting rid of pain. Yes. Can you elaborate on the type of foods we should be eating so that we get better sleep? Yes. Now, if I, tell, I say food, obviously, I'm going to step on the toes of many people. 
But let me give you in terms of nutrients. In order for you to lower pain, you need more omega-3 fatty acids, which will balance with your omega-6. Omega-6 are seriously used to create inflammation and fight diseases. But if you're not taking enough omega-3 fatty acids, and you have more omega-6, pain will be your friend. Now, you can measure your omega-3 fatty acids. You can go on lifeextension.com and put omega-3 fatty acid index. They'll give you the index. Your index need not to be less than eight. If it is less than eight, you're gonna call me I'm in chronic pain. If it goes up to 12, I don't care how old you are, you'll be running with your grandchildren because you won't have pain. The second thing that really comes to inflammation, unable to synthesize amino acids in your stomach. When we eat beans, they have to go in here and break the protein into amino acids, which goes into the bloodstream to the organs, to the cells. So the cells will use them to build them up. For example, tryptophan, eh? like chicken, beans, pinto beans, the protein in there will break down to tryptophan in the synaptic cleft, synthesized with a B vitamin, which is a B6. Then in presence of vitamin D, you are going to be making in real time serotonin. That serotonin will definitely does a lot of things. So, sleep is when our bodies regenerate. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 12, it says, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. There are our jobs nowadays, like my job, I go into the office. I mean, we moved into a new school. Every time I get into that office, I have a severe headache. Where is that headache coming from? Wi-Fi. I go out, as soon as I get in my car going home, the headache is what? Gone. Gone. This is the techno modern technology that is really, really affecting us without knowing it. Some of you have smart, um, all of us we have smart meters now. We don't see the men coming around and reading our meter. They read it from the what? Their office. When they are picking up, this, here's my advice for you. Ask them, what time do you read my meter? Some are reading it every hour. It is sending messages to the what? To the office. Tell them to program it, to take it during the time when you are not home, you are at work. So that at night, it doesn't wake you up because they are flooding your house with Wi-Fi. How many of you knew that Wi-Fi can keep you awake? Do you charge your cell phone in your bedroom? Yeah. Or do you put it beside you at night? Yeah. yeah. And do you know the way how we have really put our bed? Eh? You have Nightstand here, nightstand there, you are plugging into the what? Into the outlets there, and your head is in steam. You are frying your head. Turn around at night when you sleep. Put your head on the footbed, which is three feet away from the what? Yes, go ahead. No, no I, I was just thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to answer a question. 
I was thinking because my mom has been confused since I put her in the room with the Wi-Fi, and I was wondering all along if that's what making her more confused. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, definitely, I'm gonna take it out. <laughs> no, I mean, if you don't use Wi-Fi, okay? If you don't use Wi-Fi at night, plug it off. Turn it off. Even, even you, if you, if you, it would be also, you will see, I just want you to do an experiment, okay? Turn electricity in her room so it can be pitch black. I said, you see, you go on this breaker circuit, okay? Any breaker that is controlling power in her room, plug it off at night. The things that she's getting confused with and getting in trouble with, you'll see them over time dissipating. I mean, you can call me, but you'll see a very different change. Because once you are sleeping, eh, even the walls, the wires that pass through the walls are emitting dead electricity that affects the way we interact with it. So when you turn it over there, you turn it off, she won't have any electricity. Okay. EMF is going to go away for that period. Then in the morning when you get up, if you want to use, you turn it up again, you know? Yeah. Cell phone, take it out of the bedroom. Because every time, unless you turn it off completely and don't charge it, because you can't turn it off and charge it, it's going to turn on by itself as you charge. Those are some of the things that we needed to. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. She... Okay. Should we unplug our TV? Uh, unless you live in the living room. I mean, you sleep in the living room. In my bed. Room. I have a TV in my bedroom. Oh, take it out. I should unplug and it? Put it. Yeah, I, unplug it. Or so, put it in the living room. Okay. And my phone, my cell phone. Take it into the living room. Keep your... One of my recommendations that I put up, you see them, how to get a good night's sleep, is put it out of your bedroom. Make sure your sleeping place is only for sleep. You, okay. You can't, you can't lay down back and watch TV news. No, no. You need to sit in the living room and do that then you're going to get a good night's sleep. Yes. I can testify about that having a TV in the room. When I first met my husband and we were dating, he had a TV in his room and he would always complain of sleep. And I told him, you need to take the TV out your room. You need to program your, your body to thinking, when I come to bed, it's time to sleep, yes. not to watch TV. Yes. And when he took it out, it improves his sleep. Thank you. That's a testimony right there. But you can even get even better. For example, if you are having heart problems like high blood pressure, eh? if you are taking medicine for high blood pressure, it's imperative that you remove those things out of your room. Yes. What about if you sleep grounded? Does that counteract the effect of the EMFs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that would. Can you explain grounding, please? Eh? Can you explain grounding, please? Grounding. Before you start? Most of our like this, we have electricity, there's wiring here, okay? It is grounded in the ground, but still power is going through the walls. It emits this dead electricity. Now, the bad part of it, the second part of the question, grounding is when you take your foot to the earth and you have something that really grounds you to the earth. The bad part of us here, especially maybe you are in the country, but if you are in the city here, there are too many grounding houses coming together, so you don't get the benefit of it. That's what I can say about that. Studies are there. All right? The body must have sufficient nourishment. The God who gives his beloved sleep has furnished them also suitable food 
to sustain the physical system in a healthy condition. You can find that in Cancers and Diets, page 91, paragraph number two. Even if you read the whole page, it explains in more details how nutrients can sustain us. Disease is not a sign of old age. Moses was 120. They didn't carry him on a stretcher going up the mountain. He walked. So disease is not a sign of old age. And we shouldn't be leaving the earth with tubes around us if we follow God's way. Yes, ma'am. Yes. The only reason why I'm passing the mic around is because this is being recorded. So please speak into the mic. How, um, how important is magnesium to sleep? Oh, very extremely important. Extremely important. 98% of the population is deficient in magnesium. So if, if 100 of us in here, there are only two, I'll be one of them. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 98% of the population are deficient in magnesium. I was talking to a good friend of mine. We have been friends for a long time. He has been to my seminars many times. He told me, he said, you know, Cardington, you have been begging me to take magnesium, but I didn't see the importance of it. But do you know that I was getting this brain fog? He said, what really caught my attention, one day I was coming from work, I passed my turn in my driveway. Go all the way. I didn't know where I was. Mm. But I called you and you told me to take magnesium. Within three days, I had more energy. You know that the last stage of ATP in the mitochondria requires magnesium to make that energy. Yes, ma'am. So I see all different types of magnesium. Mm -hmm. So which magnesium is the best magnesium? That's a very good question. My suggestion for you, supplements, as they say, they are supplements. Get the basics first. Eat more vegetables. Look for foods that are high in magnesium, then supplement the difference. That would be taking you now. Magnesium oxide is just enriching your bathroom. You only, you only absorb 2%. If you take magnesium glycinate, magnesium threonate, yeah, you're right. There are so many different kinds of magnesium. Definitely, you got them. I'm not here to promote other people's business, but what I have found really to give you a good night's sleep and increase your REM sleep is magnesium threonate. When you take it together with theanine, an amino acid, it really gets you to where you need to go. I ask my kids, one of the things that I know they're deficient in magnesium and amino acids is, do you remember your dreams? Then they tell me, oh no, I don't dream at all. So it's not surprising to me that they are seeing me because how do you recharge your brain if you are not able to dream? Hmm? Yeah. She said, are you supposed to remember your dreams? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, it's not that you should suppose. It should be that way. Because the way you learn things, you put them in a short-term memory, okay? Then when you sleep at night, in the REM sleep time, that's when you move them from the short-term memory into what? Long-term memory. Then you can remember them. She has a question. I'm going to get my steps today. So, 
When I sleep, mm -hmm. I think I am unconscious because yeah. I don't know anything that's going on. Definitely. Is that <laughs> okay? That's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Because you have to remember your dreams, but I am mm -hmm. not. Out. <laughs> now, remember, eh? you go in, you go out. You go in, you go out. You don't stay in all night long. In actual fact, when you are in that mood, you are regenerating, eh? the brain has to clean itself, recharge it, prepare it for the what? The following day. So I do think that we need now, from now onwards, thinking of sleeping. Most of these dementia and old timers diseases that we suffer after age 60, they begin in our teen years by lack of sleep. Mm. Wow. Yes, ma'am. So, as a young lady like myself, <laughs> I don't know why he's laughing. Um, I'd like to know, like, uh, um, when, when you're going through that menopausal phase, mm -hmm. And you're By the way, not to cut you off, menopause is not sickness. It's just a transition. That's what they say. Yes. Thank you. And so, <laughs> and so, um, so when you're going through that menopausal phase, mm -hmm. um, the transition, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times women, I, I've heard you talk about that, right? Um, saying that you get really hot at night and mm -hmm. it's very hard to maintain mm -hmm. a decent night's sleep. So how do you help women who are going through the phase? <laughs> <laughs> no, let me tell you this. When you are experiencing that, that's a nutritional deficiency. Because when you are in childbearing age, eh? the ovaries cover that, you see? But when the ovaries have stopped, your adrenals are supposed to pick up from there, so you see the transitioning smooth. Now, my advice from ladies, eh? those of you who are under 40, above 30, you need to keep, because menopause can start after 45 years old. Yeah, so begin, to recharge your adrenals, do the liver cleanse, all those kind of things, so that you can begin to tone your body so that when you are transitioning from childbearing age to non-childbearing, the ovaries have quit now, okay? They are not working anymore. Not that they are not working, but they're still producing hormones, but not for the purpose of keeping the thermostat on. All right, so you just said something. You said we have to recharge our bodies, do like liver cleanses. Liver and stuff. cleansing. How often are we supposed to do that? I would say that if you can do it twice a year. And that's like just going fresh, like fresh foods and drinking water and like detoxing yourself naturally, you're saying? Or. I know they have different ways to detox. People do yeah, stuff to drink stuff and those. different stuff. That's, so. that's, let's, let's put that to hold. on okay. hold <laughs> because I don't want to open that can of worm right now. Let's finish what we are doing right now. It can be another time then we can talk. How can you maintain the liver? I remember I did this with another church. It took us two years just to go through the liver. It's a long, long process. We are doing it once a month. It took us 24 lessons to come to finish how you can keep your liver functioning on a regular basis. And you got to understand the liver is the organ that really detoxifies the body. And it recharges, recycles your hormones, recycles a lot of things. So, um, let me give you another example. I got sick for detoxifying my body. After I started doing the detoxification process, the second day, 
I could not get out of bed. There was an overwhelming toxins coming out. Now I'm asking my question. I call myself a guru of eating healthy, you know? But why is this happening? Yes, we are living in a toxic environment. Mm -hmm. I don't care how clean or how careful you are, but we are living in a toxic environment. Yes, ma'am. I did the same thing once. I um, was detoxing my body and spots came all over my body. Like yes. I had spots from, I woke up and there was spots all on my chest everywhere. I, I thought I was dying. Yeah. I decided I'm going to come to church because somebody's going to tell me about my spots. Because I went to my doctor and he literally stood at the door and would not come in the room. And he and he wrote me a prescription. <laughs> he did. He's like, "What is wrong with you?" Right? And he wrote me a prescription for Benadryl because he figured, you know, something it was an allergic you, you reaction allergic or something. To something. Right? That's an allergic reaction. Yeah, he would not come in the room. And I came to church that Sabbath. And the sister is not here anymore, Sister Gail. Oh. And, yeah. and she said, she walked right to me and she said, are you detoxing? And I was like, oh my God, thank you, yes, yes, yes. And she just said to me, you're not drinking enough water. And I went home and I was drinking, drinking water and like in two days the spots went away. Okay. Yeah, but, it, but yeah, it, I just thought that I was eating healthy and everything, but I just wanted to detox and that really did scare me. Now, I have put on the screen factors that can increase the risk of what? Stress is number one. Poor sleep habits, we have just talked about poor sleep habits, like variation of time for sleep. Let not your work interfere with your time of sleep. Otherwise, put me on your wheel <laughs> now, this is a figurative way. I'm just joking. Because that's the recipe for sickness. If you go to bed at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, vary about not more than an hour. The same thing, time for meals. Schedule your meals and eat them at the regular time. Because our body works in sync with our time we have situated for it. Eating before bed, we talked about that. Sleep pattern disruptions. I'm not saying this disruption, for example, the child has excessive fever, then you have to go to the emergency room, urgent care. That's a different thing altogether. Now, let me say this. Let me say this disclaimer. A lot of things that we take go to the emergency room. We, sh we shouldn't. There are things that we can do them at home if we know what we're dealing with. You see? So I just want you to know that those are some of the patterns. Medical conditions like chronic pain, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, asthma, can lead to symptoms of insomnia themselves. Diabetes is not a, a genetic disease. It's a lifestyle disease. Schedule your music. Now, you know what? Do you remember they were saying that you can't really reverse diabetes? Once you're diabetic, you're diabetic. You just need to take your medicine. You remember that? Yes. That has fallen over its head. And I can tell you this, again, cancer, you can put it over its head. Okay. All right. Medications, relying on sleeping meds. However, supplying body, the body with nutrients it requires can support a health sleep wake up cycle and help you get and better sleep you need. Those are some of the things that we need, especially B1. Eh? I like the fat-soluble B1, benfontamine. 
that crosses the brain barrier. I told my students, I said, Google search symptoms of B1 deficiency. You'll be surprised. I don't think that there's anybody in here can't find what really describes him or her. Go home and Google search B1 deficiency. You say, oh, that's mine. If you have nerve pain, B1 is involved. Chronic pain, B1 is involved. Anxiety, B1 is involved. Depression, B1 is involved. Heart problems, B1 is involved. High blood pressure, B1 is involved. What can I say? You're going to see. Those are some of the symptoms. Now, will this stop it? No. The body is a system that has many components. So you can't say, okay, oh, the person tells you, oh, there's this supplement that cures everything. There again, that's not true. There's nothing that this only, then God could only create cabbage if he wanted to, that cabbage will be sustaining my people. That's why he has put different foods in different nutrients in different foods. So eating a variety of foods, you see that picture there? It's just a symbolic, I'm not saying you eat. You see at the bottom you have many what? A again. Leafy vegetables. You see, as you go higher in those, the amounts becomes what? Smaller and smaller. Now, if you're going to go to Whole Foods and get organic chicken, the whole thing, you sit on the table and eat it, hoping that you're going to get well, that is really not a good thing. Too much of anything. That's why we have Dr. Temperance. Who's going to say, hey, be temperate. We have Dr. Rest there. You see, it's not only Dr. Nutrition. Nature bears abuse as long as she can what? Without resisting. Then she arouses and makes a mighty effort to read herself the circumstances and the evil treatments she has suffered. Then come headache, chills, fevers, nervous, uh, paralysis, all those things in the brewers, or oh, how many times have we purchased what you call a good food at the expense of the fevered system, loss of appetite, and loss of sleep, inability to enjoy food, a sleepless night, hours of suffering, all for the meal in which taste was gratified. Mm. Don't eat for taste, eat for nutrition. Now, don't misunderstand me, okay? Because if you hate the food, no matter how nutritious it is, it's not going to get into your system because the brain is not going to put it in there. The attitude we go with at the table, in actual fact, do not argue when you sit at the table. Let the meals come. Don't tell your child, slow down, son. After he ate, you bring him aside, son. It seems like somebody was taking food from your plate. <laughs> you, seriously, parents, I know I've done it, but lots of studies have identified when you disappoint a person, don't have a good attitude at table, even their nutrition is not beneficial to them. Let's be waiting for Christ coming. Amen. You know, there are three surprises in heaven. Number one, you are there. Amen. That's number one. The second one, the people you thought their pious will be there are not there at all. 
But the ones you say, mm, this one is a devil in person. <laughs> it's right there. You see, so I want us to, can I leave you with one thing? If I go, let me move. Those are some of the, um, I wanted you to see. Now, can you look at those, read those? Yeah, just, 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 just take a look and see how many describe you when you are sleeping by yourself. You are all by yourself. Nobody, nobody really seeing you, but you are interfering. You are. Do you see how common food can help us feel good? Even acts of goodness are mediated by good food. If you are, when you get home, all the kids are under the table. Look at your table, your plate. Look at your plate. Anger. Be able to discuss issues that are very difficult with your children without you losing your what? It requires a calm mind. Here are some. I've, I've left this for suicide radiations. All right, I know that we have to stop. So we want to thank uh, Dr. Banda for all of his insightful information. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Banda. No problem. Um, I think that we might have to have him come out and talk to us again and, you know, about this information. Um, one of the things that I would like, if you have any questions that you'd like to talk with Dr. Banda about, then I think it would be okay. For yeah, I mean, definitely. Okay. So um, he also does a blood analysis that can help you to figure out what is going on with you and why you're having these feelings. I work as a therapist as well, and I do see many times when my therapist, my 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 clients come to me and say, "I'm feeling depressed, and I I want having uh, suicidal ideations." And so some of these things, and with our food, it makes a big difference as well. So we're going to have a young man, uh, Joshua, I think your name is Joshua. Um, he's just going to close us out in prayer, and then after that, you are free to talk with Dr. Banda some more. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Joshua Symes, the AY assistant leader. Um, so I just wanted to say on behalf of the AY department, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you, Dr. Banda, for speaking with us and being able to give us an amazing uh, lesson and how that relates to not only our, our sleep, our nutrients, and our relationship with God. Um, so yeah, with that being said, um, do we have a basket in the back? Sister Ellen's gonna find us a basket on the way out. If you just wanna drop any offering um, that goes towards the AY, program, uh, the AY department allows us to continue to put on programs and things for the youth. Um, so yeah, so with that being said, I'm going to close this out with prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to sleep, Lord, the gift you've given us of rest, Lord, um, not only on the Sabbath, but throughout the week. Please help us to take advantage of it in the, the healthy ways that um, uh, that we were given today um, to help us to watch our nutrients and uh, mind our temple uh, because you have instructed us to keep our the temple of our body clean and to keep it uh, well taken care of Lord so uh, help us to continue to educate ourselves in order to do that Lord um, uh, please just continue to uh, keep our bodies healthy and help us to continue to educate others on how to keep their bodies healthy as well and help us to have a good night's rest tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Safe and safe traveling mercies. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You're free to come up and talk with Dr. Banda.
and she thought that we wouldn't, you know, finish this quickly. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, so I'm going to actually send something for you so that at least you get this quickly. No, no, don't worry about that. I'm good. Well, yeah. you know, it's, he, he told you already that he knew that you're good, but that sometimes you don't work. Salad in there. Everybody leaving stuff. Huh? Everybody leaving stuff.
What'd you say to, to click on to stop the uh, live streaming? Okay, I'll see it in screen. Mm -hmm. 